Hey guys, today I am here in Czech Republic at the HPH Sailplane Factory. Together with CEO Jaroslav, we will have a walk around in the factory and see how a sailplane is manufactured from start to finish. Jaroslav gave us an amazing opportunity to film here in the factory during the day when they are working on all the different parts and pieces here. That's why we have some special things to show you, but it is not in the correct order as a sailplane is manufactured. So we jump directly into this part here. Tomorrow they will glue together the shelves and here they are testing with modeling clay on all these spots here where you can see the tape if the shell will glue together perfectly how high this gap is. So then later on they apply here thick resin for gluing and they know how thick the, the glue needs to be. And now here we can directly see they lift and rotate one half of the mold and the second one below. So now they disassembled the shells again and they wrote here with numbers how many millimeters of gaps are there. So they know exactly how much of thickened um, epoxy they need to glue this together so that it's not too much in there. And now it is time to assemble here the last part. Here are the air brakes, levers. And then tomorrow morning it's time to finally glue both halves, both shells together of the wing. And the left hand wing, the right hand wing. And then the wing is born, I would say. <laughs> here at the fuselage of the twin truck, they are preparing all the hoses, the rods and so on. And then later on, in a few days, they will also make the same test with the clay, with the molding clay, if the shell fits together, how thick the gap is, and then if everything is inspected and checked, they will finally glue the shell together and the fuselage is one piece. What is really important here is that both halves are manufactured with the same resin at the same day in the same temperature so the material is exactly the same. Here in this area they of course also laminate all the smaller parts of the glider. There are so many small parts which are necessary for a glider. This one here is the inner shell of the cockpit of the shark. Then in the background I think we see the the box for the air brakes. And of course, there are many other parts in manufacturing at the moment. So for laminating parts, it is very important to have all the different layers of carbon fiber, glass fiber and aramid in the correct orientation, in the correct shape, stick together after each other. So that's a very, very important thing that the part is stiff at the end, that it has the strength that is also calculated so they need to cut all these pieces here as well and then lay them up one after each other. Here we can see some of these uh, layers, that's the carbon fiber. At the end they use peel ply so that the surface gets even and rough at the same time so that you can glue them together afterwards. And then of course at the end you need a lot of other material for the vacuum backing. So, um, Everything is put into a vacuum bag like this here or this one. I think it's just a different color. You need some fleece and you need also something that the air will get uh, in there so that there are air channels. They are using a lot of sandwich structure in gliders. So especially here, they will cut now these uh, parts for the wing. This machine here is using vacuum to suck down to, to fix the form on the table and then they have a high frequency cutter which cuts here all the parts but it also makes the markings so all the workers they know which part it is where they should align it and so on so here we can see a small uh, line and now as you can hear it is cutting this is a cut and this is a marking and they even have here all the, the numbers and names. 
we can see the final part, the machine takes about six minutes to cut all these huge parts out of it. Now we are here in the final assembly. They are assembling the landing gear here. Of course, they have a jig so that they can rotate the fuselage. They can work better on the glider. Yeah, there is still a lot to do. After they installed the landing gear here and the main wheel, they will also install this part. It is really a very yeah, interesting part. It's the mixer. Um, it is a highly precise carbon fiber part with all these levers and so on. And they will put it in from the cockpit side, but it, at the end it will be in here, in this area. But before they need to install all the hoses here, the hydraulics, the disc brake, and so on. And later on we will also see how they will CNC cut this carbon fiber part here, which is quite complex. Here they are finally assembling the shark, so they are adjusting all the ailerons, flaps and so on, that the angles are correct, that the forces are correct, and there are all these small threads here where you can adjust all these angles and everything needs to be perfect, needs to be checked and then it's only a few steps away from the maiden flight. We just heard that this is serial number 200 of the Shark, so it's a very special glider. <laughs> what you can see now, the stickers are missing, the miler ceilings are missing, the competition sign, registration sign and so on. So there's still, there are still some steps to finish the glider until it gets into the trailer for the maiden flight. And then here in the background we can see a glider which will make the maiden flight today. So it is prepared for its first flight. It looks like a glider. Everything here is on there. Even the bug wipers, the avionics, the interior and it is already in the trailer, ready to go. <laughs> of course, every glider needs to have a perfect surface finish. And here they are sanding the surface, they are preparing it for perhaps another coat of paint. And it is a lot of hand work involved in this part. But of course, we gliders love to have a perfect surface that it's really aerodynamic, that it looks perfect and it's just amazing. <laughs> they are using a blue color so that they know where there are uneven parts. So if there's a lower spot, there you will see the blue area and they need to, to sand it down so that it's really an even surface, that the customer at the end is really happy and that the aerodynamics are perfect. Here we can have a look in the painting box. Of course, everything needs to be painted several times. Here we can see a twin shark fuselage after it is joined together. That's the thick resin here. It needs to be cleaned up, finished, and of course the surface also needs then to be finished. Here we need to cut all these, uh, these edges. There are some parts missing in here. Uh, yeah. The seat pad and so on. So still a lot of work to do, but it looks like a a raw, <laughs> a raw fuselage. Here at HPH they are producing a lot of parts on their own. They have many CNC machines here for different sizes of objects and so on. In this case we have a closer look how they are producing this exact part here. It is for the twin shark for the steerable tailwheel. Let's have a closer look at the raw part and how it is manufactured. They start with this block of aluminium. Then in between, that's a raw milk part, but there's still something missing. And then we can have a look into here, into this machine. There we can see how such a part is milled at the moment. At the end, they will have a raw aluminum part 
and then of course it needs to be anodized and black color and I think this is made somewhere outside of the factory. Really great to see is the difference in weight between this part, the final part and this aluminum block. Even those very small parts uh, they are manufacturing in-house here with this machine. It's a rotary part with one hole in here and of course it is great to have it adjusted to your needs, to your size, which you need and it is so much quicker to just produce it in-house than getting it somewhere externally. I would say that's the most overkill machine here. This huge room and so on. And then they are milling here this mixer box, which we saw before at the final assembly. So this is the part with the mixers and so on. It's laminated and now they are cutting it from all these different directions, from the side, from the upper side. That's a part of the air brake, which they also mill here on the side, up and around. What's completely crazy is to see this huge CNC mill here and it is very, very precise. And both parts here just take about five minutes to mill. So it's really quick. Yeah. Also a part like this here needs to be milled. And of course you can use a smaller CNC mill, but sometimes they are even using the big one for the small parts because they just can do it. <laughs> And this here is then the final part of the air brake, perfectly milled, shape is always exactly the same, it's amazing, and it's so lightweight. And then here are two machines for water cutting, so they can cut out some sandwich parts, for example carbon fiber sandwich parts, but also big aluminum parts, um, even these really really thick uh, blocks of aluminum which they later on put into the CNC machine and cut them so that there's not too much of waste of the material and it is really fast and it's incredible how thick materials they can cut here this side here is cut by water and even this one here in this direction uh, they cut it but at the end you can see that it's not not too precise anymore. If you use it for milling afterwards, then the precision there is not so important. And this here is a very special part. We have the form in, at the inside, so this sandwich part with carbon fiber on top and below. That's so cool to see what they cut here. Only form, carbon fiber, glass fiber parts, Here's another type of plastic or foam, glass fiber. Really small parts. Here they are milling an instrument panel. What is really interesting is that they are also engraving all the labels for the switches and so on. Afterwards, they use white paint in these engraved parts so that you can see this label. I really like this. And of course, it's much more work to do than just applying stickers. Here they attach the canopy to the canopy frame. It is prepared already with the form here on the inside um, so that the glue won't go to the inside because otherwise you would see it. To what? What sucking fit? To the scotch. Cross it the Yeah, cross that out. The cutout here is made with CNC mill as well, so it fits great. But of course there is a small gap, which there should be a small gap, and it the the surface finish here on the outside, the paint and so on, that's something which we, they will do afterwards. It's always fascinating to see these small parts which we saw previously which are manufactured then in the final assembly. Like here, this small part here we saw which was CNC manufactured. And now this complete assembly 
is the inner shell of the fuselage of the twin shark and that's that will be glued in at some point into the fuselage. Of course also all these small parts and bigger parts they all need to be stored somewhere. So the cool thing about this system is that you just select a number and then you will get what you need. Um, and it doesn't take too much of space because they have the storage on the outside of the building. There's no room to just walk. It's much quicker, of course, and everything looks clean and tidied up. Here we can now see winter instruments. A lot of them. More parts for the twin shark. It's just incredible how many different parts and pieces you need for just one glider. It's simple. unbelievable how much work is in there. It was an amazing opportunity from Jaroslav that we are allowed to film here during the production. For me it is really fascinating to see all of this every time I am here. In the next video I will show you how a maiden flight of a twin shark is made here at HPH. We will drive to an airfield nearby and then have a look what they are doing at the maiden flight. I'm really excited to see this glider flying for the first time. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers. It is absolutely not fair if you see this when you're coming out of a gliding manufacturing facility. Look at this nice cloud street.